I'd like to welcome you to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center, where today we're gonna to look at tinting lenses. Now, kind of like in-house edging, I know not every single place does tinting, but knowing how to tint can greatly increase your value as an optician because tinting can actually be a pretty darn good moneymaker. The single most complicated formula in all of optics, TR is equal to TI plus TM. Just completely made that up. Your tinting results will always be the combination of the time that that lens is immersed in the dye and the temperature of that dye. The deeper, darker, higher percentage of depth of color hue that you want on that lens, the longer you leave it in the drink. If that tint, the dye is not taking to that lens, will you turn the temperature of the tint tank up? You get that lens to open up, the molecules to separate a little bit, enough for that dye to sink in there, and you get yourself a tinted lens. These are not, 99.9% .9 of the time, AR-coated lenses. Generally, if you're gonna combine a tint in an AR, that is done at the lab, where of course they have the AR capabilities. So generally speaking, because of material, because of style, these are generally pretty low cost lenses. So if the worst happens and you cook the temperature up a little bit too high and you ruined the scratch coating on a single vision CR39 lens, it's not the end of the world, especially if you're priced upright. Now, more than ever, a niche market opportunity. The opening scene for this video, Beach Bum Bob's prescription sunglasses while you wait. I genuinely believe that's a real viable, marketable business right now. Online has tossed out the silly eyeglass prescription nonsense, Open yourself up a really nice shop on the beach, stock a wide range of nice frames, stock a wide range of maybe a poly tintable lens, get yourself an edger, charge a premium for while you wait, charge a premium for being on the beach, you can have yourself a really nice little business going. Yes, results will vary. This is very much the dark arts area of lenses. It will vary, your results will vary because of time, temperature, and of course the material that the lens is made of and any coatings that might be on there. There are no hard and fast rules. It will take time and experience to find out which lenses work well, which don't, what works for you. Generally, when you call the lab, it's always best to say, and I'm going to be tinting these. You call in for stock. Even those, you can say, and I'll be tinting. We always use the Seiko Pentax line. They have a poly that's designed for that, and they have some other lenses. Let me grab one. Actually, I noticed this. 167 high index. Uh, da, 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 da. Fast, consistent tinting in the 167. It will vary. That happens. Don't think it's the end of the world. Now I'm going to do something you haven't done in quite a while. There's a disclaimer here. I have done a lot of tinting. Anything that we could do in-house where I worked, we did in-house in order to save money. But I didn't do it eight hours a day, five days a week. And there are people that actually do that in larger labs. If you are one of those people and you've got some great tips and suggestions for us, by all means, get in touch with me and we'll certainly share them with everyone else. We are gonna hit the bench. I'm gonna show you how to set up a tint tank and we're actually going to do some tinting. Tints come in a variety of different ways. You have solid sun tints by percent, and I'll show you this and we'll talk about it. You have solid cosmetic tints by percent. You have cosmetic gradient tints, darker at the top, lighter at the bottom. You have cosmetic double gradient tints, one color at the top, different color at the bottom. I'll show you one of the therapeutic tints. There are tints that are supposed to help migraines, some low vision things, um, seizures, 
And there is an entire line as well for sport tents that are supposed to help your golf ball show up, tennis ball, sporting clays. So quite a lot going on there in the tent department. With the exception of the size of this unit, this is a very typical tent tank setup and we're going to do it from scratch. Now I say this is a very large unit. Um, they also make them down to a one third of this size. They literally just have this size and the pots are half size or split. Certainly works just fine for your smaller practices and it's far more economical to run. This is more of an industrial commercial size but you may very well find something this big in a little store where you work. The first thing we're going to do is set up the unit so that it actually heats up the water that's in the pots. Now to do that, we're going to pull these out, a couple of them, and we're going to put in this stuff, which is heat transfer fluid. And I guarantee you're going to run into somebody that says, oh, we use motor oil or water or antifreeze. You know, just use the right stuff. It's kind of pricey, but it lasts forever and it does what it's supposed to do. It can continuous and consistent heat transfer from the heating element up through the pots. So just suck it up and get the right stuff for the job. Now in the pots, depending on the water supply that you have where you work, you may be able to use just tap water. People will use distilled water, filtered water, spring water, I am just going to use regular old tap water because my results don't matter that much because obviously I'm not going to be selling these lenses off to a customer. Now, tints themselves obviously come in every possible color. I have always used these little bottles from BPI. I just like them. They come in a dry powder form. They come in a premix, of course, all different kinds. It just really comes down to what you prefer using. Well, you've got one of the therapeutic tints, and I'll actually tint a lens with that and show you that color, talk about that a little bit. We have got neutralizer. One of the pots is generally kept with neutralizer in it. If you walk away and forget and make one of your lenses an 80% when you wanted a 60, the neutralizer can actually reduce that depth or hue a little bit for you. We have some UV formula. Basic plastic lenses don't have much UV protection. You're making a sunglass. You need to treat them so that they prevent UV light from coming through. I've got a little spray bottle that I recommissioned, filled it up with isopropyl alcohol. I have always carefully wiped down my lenses with isopropyl alcohol before putting them into any kind of tint because anything that's left on that lens, a fingerprint, a little paper towel smudge or something, the tint is not gonna go there and you're gonna have a lens that didn't work out very well, probably create a bit of garbage. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this set up for actual tinting and I'll record that so you can um, watch along. But I'm also gonna change my shirt. Um, I'm gonna, don't wanna ruin one of my good work shirts. These dyes are water soluble. Generally, if you get it on your clothes, it will wash out. The HTF, not so much. If I get a splash or something, I'd rather ruin an old t-shirt than this. I will be back in just a couple of minutes. All right, for those of you that are observant, you may have noticed some things have moved around a little bit. It has actually been two weeks since I started this project because as I mentioned, this tank is huge and originally I had a gallon and a half of HTF and then I bought another gallon and then I needed another gallon just to get this thing up to about a third of the way up the pots. Let's go ahead and finish that part of things. Get this opened up and we'll get back on track here. And I'll take a picture of this so you can see where I'm aiming for on the pots with the HTF. I said I was going for about one third of the way up the pot, but when I pull one out, it looks like I'm actually at about a half. Anything in between those two will be just fine. You know, what's starting to happen now is the pots are all lifting. So I'm going to stop there. And I'm going to pour some water in these. But before I do that, I'm going to wipe them out one more time. I've already done that a few times, but as I said, they've been kind of 
sitting out here for a couple of days. So let's go ahead and pitchers of water. Um, this is what I just had sitting around the house. These are kind of big and heavy and a little clunky. My little pink flamingos there. Um, so you probably want a nice lightweight plastic pitcher. As these heat up, they're going to steam off constantly. If you have your tin tank on, it's a constant refilling of the pots. So you're going to want either a pitcher or maybe even a little bit of a watering can. Might work. That's not a bad way to go. Let's I'm not going to top these all the way off because I'm going to need to add the liquid tints, neutralizer, and the UV here. All right, we're good there. Uh, I think what I would do next, I'm going to start putting some of these dyes in here. And where have I got my gloves? I said I've never actually ruined anything with dyes, but probably don't want to put on your brand new white silk blouse to do this either. All right, most important thing we're going to do before we start dumping our dyes and our other treatments into this is we're going to draw ourselves a picture. And I'm actually going to put an X there and an X there. And we've got one, two, three and three. And what will we do? We'll do black there. And we shake these bottles up real, real good. And we're going to even rinse it once. A razor blade here. If you had a sink, it's so much easier to do this. Just fill up that bottle, shake it one more time, and rinse it out. But I'm just going to go ahead and dump a little tiny bit of water in there. Show what I'm doing. Just make sure you get all the dye out of there. There we go. All right, so black is done. Let's see what we got next. We got yellow. Let's mark where our yellow is. And shake, 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 shake. And obviously it's pretty easy to tell the difference between black and yellow. Not so easy to tell the difference between your blacks, your grays, your G15s, your browns. Next we got G15. Let's mark that on our list. And of course, we're going to do some tinting and I'll show you G15 is a color they used back in the days, glass military applications, gray green mix. Last but not least, we have brown. We'll just put brown. Here. Now, of course, I'm just going to break this all down when I am done. And I'm not going to keep the tint tank since I don't really have any use for it. Um, if I were in a store, I would color code and make this into a really nice table on Word or something and color code it and put it up where it's immediately in front or behind the tank so there's never any question. All right, we have got our UV. Let's put that in this corner here. UV is done. We got our newt. Let me put newt in the other corner. So this is what we're looking at. We'll put that in there. And last but certainly not least, we shall do our FL41, FL which is our 
therapeutic, and we'll put that right there. So there. And again, I'm just going to end up with water and water. Go ahead and mark that on my chart here. So that's the, the setup of the tint tank. We've got our HDF fluid, we've got water, we've got our pots clean, we've got our different tints, we've got UV, we've got neutralizer, we've got the therapeutic tint. Uh, something else you're going to want to get your hands on is a good old-fashioned egg timer. I really like the old ones that give you the tick, 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 tick. It's a constant reminder that you've got something in the tint tank. Constant reminder to go over and make sure that the water is where it's supposed to be. Easy to forget if your timer is silent while it's running. So this is a good reminder. A couple of dollars on Amazon. I would encourage you to get one of those. This is a gradient unit. We'll show you how to use that and play around with it a little bit. I do hope you are enjoying this piece on tinting. If you are, you're watching us on Facebook, please do give us a like. Watching us on YouTube, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there in the corner and make absolutely certain that every lens that you tint comes from Laramie K. We are going to take a look at time to full sunglass or 80% in both G15 and black. UV treatment, FL41, how neutralizer works, adding a specialty color, how some different materials tint up, what a gradient and a double gradient look like, and how they might be applied. And we'll even take a look at the tint edge versus edge tint issues. Two more things to add to your shopping list. One is a rinse pail like this. This really is about the perfect size. Metal is best, but this is what I had at hand. And you want a spoon, preferably one with a little bit longer handle because every once in a while you are going to drop something into the pot and you're going to have to retrieve it. Again, I think you'll find life much easier if you have a sink nearby. Since full sun is probably the most popular tint to apply, we'll start there. I have four sets of lenses. I've got Seiko's Tintable Poly and I've got a basic CR39. I'm going to load up the two CR39 and get them going in both the black and the G15, which as we know, I can tell, I remember where those are because I have my chart. So let's go ahead and get those going. I'm going to pull those out. It looks like it's time to fill up my pots a little. Do that. You are going to want to watch those all the time. Anytime the tint tank is on, they'll be steaming off, evaporating. You want to keep that picture in the body. You want to keep them topped off whenever possible. And let me grab my CR39. Let me grab another one here. Now, when loading a lens in a lens holder, this is a lens holder, like so. Don't get carried away. Some of these even have a spring and a thumb screw. Light is the way to go. Uh, old timer taught me that. These get hot enough, particularly, particularly for CR39, that if you really put down on the clamp, you get enough heat going, you could actually warp the lens a little bit. So easy does it. And when you put a lens into the drink, you always want to stir the pot, stir the pot. Kind of do that throughout the day, throughout your use of these things. Let's get this other one going. I said that just came out of the packet, so I don't think I'm going to get carried away there. Get that one in the drink. Stir, stir, stir. Now, I had mentioned the egg timer. I'm going to put that on. That ticking is a constant reminder to you that you've got something in the tank. You're going to be called all over the place. You're going to answer the phone. You're going to go help a customer. You're going to make a repair. You're going to edge a pair of glasses. This is that constant reminder in the back of your head. Oh yeah, I need to go check the pots. I need to refill them. I need to make sure nothing's boiling over. Give them a little bit of stir. Take a peek and see at how they're doing. Okay, actual elapsed time for our CR39 lenses to go from clear to a beautiful, deep, dark, 80% full sun 
50 minutes, five zero minutes, almost an hour. This is where my rinse tank tint pail comes in handy. Both does two things. It cools and sets the tint or the dye in the lens. And of course it allows me to handle them again. I am immediately going to toss my poly, tintable polys in to the drink and get them going. Let's get this one out. Cool that down a little bit. Get that out. That. Stir, 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 stir. Stir, 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 stir. All right. Now when you're checking the percent of depth of color or hue or however you wanna say it, I'm sure there's a proper word. This is a really, really bright area. Take them outside. Generally, that's the front window of the store is good. Taking a look, this is good, consistent color, nice and dark. I mean, it really would be a nice lens to wear outside in the sun. A couple of things. One, when you're showing someone what it looks like, it is always best, let me grab this, to hold it up against a white background. Probably gives the best perception for them to say, yeah, that's as dark as I wanted, or no, we need to go a little bit lighter or something like that. So use a white background, a paper towel, a white cloth or something, be better. If you are working with someone on a custom tint or someone who is very picky, don't say, I didn't warn you. You've heard me say it a hundred times. You don't want to take glasses apart any more than you have to. Hold them up, let them take them outside. Even if you need to orient them correctly, let them walk around like this. Before you're putting the glasses together, taking them apart, putting them together, taking it apart, especially if it's a plastic, it's an older sunglass, that risk greatly increases on breaking that frame when you already have a difficult job going. Do it this way and then switch over. So we've got these. I just put the tintable polys in the tank. We're gonna do the magic slide again, and I will be back here. And believe it or not, I believe we're looking at probably almost two solid hours before these are actually an 80% dark. And like magic, let's see how we're doing here. Stir up my pots. We have got our tintable poly lenses. They are looking pretty good. Elapsed time, 110 minutes. So almost two hours in the drink here to get these looking like that. I'm gonna give that a rinse, cool enough to touch. And that is looking pretty darned good for a poly lens as a full 80% sun. Let me pull this one out. Cool it down so I can touch it, set it to this side. The next thing we want to look at is neutralizer. How do I take a lens that came out a little bit too dark or one that I want to play around with the color and mix and match or something? How do I remove some of it? Let's say the customer went outside and they said, no, that's actually a little bit too dark for what I was going to use them for. Let's see how we lighten it up. Well, we lighten it up using neutralizer and just like others, we just drop that into the drink. Stir up the pot a little bit. And let's see, oh, my timer is still running here. I'm gonna go for 15, more of a reminder because I think I'm actually just gonna stand here and watch this. It's a fresh batch, it shouldn't take very long, but let's find out. Well, certainly glad we didn't do that one in real time. We're coming up on half an hour in the drink here. Um, I have to admit, it is really, really chilly here in the studio. I think the tin tank's still kind of in the warm up phases a little bit. I'm gonna burn my fingers here. Let's... And you recall this was a full deep dark 80%. And you can see how much that that has lightened up by being in the neutralizer for half an hour. And again, this would be if you needed to kind of correct something, maybe you decided you wanted to add a little bit of brown for contrast, or you wanted to dip it from the black into the G15 and pick up a little bit of green, just playing around with colors. That's the neutralizer.
Let's go ahead and get our FL41, our therapeutic tint going. Let's see what that looks like. Stop blepharospasm and migraine. And I had to look up what blepharo, blepharospasm is. It just means that your eye twitches. So let's go ahead and get that in the drink. Stir, 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 stir. Always stir in the pots whenever you walk by them. Double check that they're all topped off still and don't need any refreshing. Looks good. All right, our FL41 has been in the drink for about 45 minutes. That looks just about right. I've seen a handful of these in my time. We used to do something similar with a 90% black for a gentleman that had severe photophobia. Let me get my white background for you. You can kind of see what that looks like there. That's a therapeutic tint. There are some other colors out there for therapy kinds of tints. We'll talk about uh, specialty tints for things like sports and hunting next up. Next up, let's do a yellow, which falls under the sports or specialty tint category. Let's drop our lens in there and get it going. And what are we gonna do? We're gonna stir, 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 stir. Always want to, the longer the tints sit, especially when not heated, the more they're gonna solidify and kind of sink to the bottom again. If you haven't fired up your tank for a while, you definitely wanna get the thing heated up and you definitely wanna stir up the bottoms of the pots. So we're good there. Let's see, um, I have this here. Let's see, other special application tins. We have golf, 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 tennis, sport, uh, especially for boating and spectator activities, skeet or sporting clays when you're shooting the clays. And there's a specific one for skiing as well. So all kinds of opportunities there for specialty sales. Let's go ahead and set our timer. I think we'll go for 40 minutes. I'll see you back in a moment. All right, we are at the 30 minute mark. And I almost lost that lens. Look at how nice that turned out. Let's rinse that off. Cool it down a little bit. And there we have a really nice, what they would call hunting tint or shooting tint. I actually used to have a set of these for one of my Rudy projects back in the day when I would ride when it was cold and rainy out. And it did actually really help increase contrast. You wouldn't think it would be all that different, but it can almost make a cloudy day sunny. It's kind of cool. Not for everything, but hey, there's a nice yellow. I mentioned some of the other colors. Don't forget, you know, it's a nice specialty little niche. You've got, like I said, theater kids. You've got the really eccentric lady that wants something really special. Well, tinting can help you achieve those other little specialty colors that match frames and those signs of things. Uh, let's go next. We're gonna do a gradient tint. A gradient tint is a tint that is darker at the top and then fades out either to light or to clear at the bottom of the lens. And there are two ways of doing this. One is the best way is, and what are we gonna do first? We're gonna stir, 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 stir. The best way to do this is by hand. And yes, for the best results, you literally stand at the tint tank and do this for 30 minutes. 40 minutes. Gonna get your best results that way. Remember that your lens is upside down in this case. You want the dark at the top and the light at the bottom. So you have your lens flipped over and the longer you leave it near the top, the darker it's going to be. Lighter, darker, lighter, darker. The longer you leave it in, the darker it's gonna get. This is pretty popular for both cosmetics, kind of a light fade where it's dark and then light. And there's some sunglass lines, even some really high-end stuff that do it as well. 
Now the other option here is to use something like this, which is called a gradient arm. And I've done what I could to tweak this one in. Let's see how it goes for us. Let's see how we're doing. They're all different kinds of arms. This is kind of a middle of the road one. Uh, there are also ones that use a screw instead of the mechanical arm. It's a little bit smoother. Of course, they build in non-repetitive motion so that it mimics the human touch a little bit more. Certainly some great ones out there. You know, it's a CR39 lens, it's a brown. We're not looking for a perfect sunglass. We're looking for something maybe around the 30 or 40% mark. So we're probably talking about 20 minutes or so here. Let's check back then. All right, combined time between the gradient unit and, whoops, that didn't really turn it off. There we go. And my kind of waving things around and dipping. I think we're pretty good on our solid gradient tint. And if you're wondering why I'm using whole lenses rather than cuts, um, obviously all this stuff is just going to become trash for me. It's kind of silly to put the wear and tear on the edger when I have no reason to, but that's actually a pretty good, yeah, that's actually a pretty good gradient right there. Dark at the top, this would of course be the top of your frame. This would be down here at the bottom. It's a gradient tint. Next up is going to be our double gradient tint, and that is where it is a solid dark color on top and another color at the bottom. So what we're gonna do in this case, I'm gonna make it the Hunter's Special, which is something that I just completely made up, and we are going to do our brown at the top, and we're gonna put a little yellow at the bottom. Let me get my holder back here. I'm gonna turn my lens around. Get that in there, let's see. that. And what are we going to do? We're going to stir the pot up and all we're going to do is just wave that around in here. Probably about 20 minutes. I don't want to get carried away. All right, this really wasn't very long at all. I think maybe 10 minutes tops I left this in here. I think you'll get the idea of what I was after. Biggest thing on the gradients is just keep that lens moving, keep that lens moving either by hand or using the gradient arm, one or the other. Double gradients, let's face it, are kind of sort of a thing of the past. Um, they used to be a thing old ladies used to get gray or a brown and pink for their cheeks. Back when I was young, that was kind of popular. But if somebody wants a double gradient, this is what you are after. And this actually wouldn't be a bad hunter's lens. Think about it, you've got both uh, the brown and the yellows are a good high contrast design. So maybe somebody actually would want you to come up with this for them. But there's a double gradient, one color at the top, another color at the bottom. All right, let's take a look at a couple of different materials. We have got a stock Trilogy or Trivex lens. I've got that Seiko 1.67 that sh the packet showed that it was for tinting or it was tintable. And I have got a surfaced poly. Let's get those in the drink and get our timer started. What didn't I do? I did not stir. Let's see, let's get that. Give that a good stir. That's better. All right, let's get our timer started. We know we're gonna be looking at at least 40 minutes. So let's set that and we'll come on back and see how we did. All right, let's see what our results are. My goodness, we have passed the, oh my goodness, almost 100 minute mark. Let's pull this one out. And this is, well, clearly not much of anything. Let's see, what lens is this? This is, this is number four. Number four is a Trilogy or a Trivex lens. 
obviously not going to take a tint. That's really what this one is about. I'm just saying if you are trying materials other than CR39 or your tintable poly, you need to be careful. Talk to the lab, talk to your stock lens company. This is number five, number five. This was that 1.67 I actually showed you the packet for that said reliable, consistent tinting. Well, yeah, maybe for a cosmetic. I'm not sure that would ever get to a sun or not. Um, but again, your results may vary. And our last one here, number seven, and number seven is a surfaced poly lens, which isn't bad. I suspect if I left it in the drink for another hour or something, we'd probably get pretty close to a sun. Not sure about spot on there. But the moral of the story on different materials is be careful. Yes, your results will vary. Talk to the lab. Talk to your stock lens company. That leaves us with UV. Let's go ahead and put this into the UV. And what are we going to do? We're going to stir the pot up. Now that pot, if it was not warm, would look very, very odd. It would look like that. That is completely normal. Don't worry about that. As soon as it heats up, those crystals dissolve again. This says it is five minute, um, five minute UV. So let's set our timer to five minutes and I will be back then. We'll pull it out and we will take a look at how that UV looks on the UV meter when compared to the identical lens that hasn't been treated. UV, UV first, tint second, UV first, tint second, UV first, tint second. All right, our five minutes are now up. Let's go ahead and rinse that lens off. And I will show you how those two lenses compare. No UV, UV on the UV meter. All right, I've got two lenses here. The one just came out of the drink and the other one is completely uncoated. I've got my UV tester here on loan from our friends over at Sios. Let's go ahead and clear that. So setting is okay. I'm going to put the one with no UV coating of any kind in there. I'm going to say read it. Reading is okay. And it says UV is 62% visible. And then it says visible 94 and danger category zero. Not something you'd want to be wearing outside on a bright and sunny day. Let's go ahead and set. This is the lens that we just pulled out from the UV treatment in the tint tank. It says setting is okay. I'm going to set that lens in there. I'm going to hit read. So it's reading is okay. And sure enough, our UV is down to 3%. It says visible 93 and safe category zero. So anything under 5% is considered safe for UV. So our UV treatment did what it needed to do. All right, we are in the final stages. Two steps to go in what is probably going to be one of the longest videos that we have ever made. Let's talk about whether you tint an edge or edge and tint. And the answer is it doesn't matter. Uh, lens B there uh, that was tinted and then edged where lens C, uh, well, that was edged and then tinted. I think you can see that there is no difference between those two. Last couple of things. One, again, guys, I have tinted a lot of lenses in my life. I'm not an expert. Did it kind of see to the pants? I'm sure there are people that have a much more scientific approach to all this, which leaves us with the question of temperature. I put this tank on three at about halfway, at about 7.30, it's about 10.30 now, and it has reached all of about 140 degrees. That's really not tint territory. Tint territory is up around 200. So I'm gonna go ahead, 
pull that out. I'm going to crank this up to six and I'm going to let it go probably for a good hour and a half to two full hours. Come back and um, show you what we end up at on full. We don't want boil over, but we do want to see that steam rising up out of the pots. If you look around online, you will find some advice on the best temperature for some different materials. You've got to stay on top of this. If you leave the pots covered and leave it on its highest setting for all day, they will boil over and make a hell of a mess. You have hours of cleanup, you corrupt your HTF, not a good thing. So once you put your tin tank on, you've got to stay with it all day long. After many, many hours of being on, because this is a gigantic tank, I've reached about 180 degrees, 160, I started getting some steam. I know advice is that some of the materials you wanna be right around the 200, 205 mark. So I'm right in the range where I might start thinking about putting a lens in. Just like everything else in your optician's life, the more stuff you do, the different things that you do, the more interesting your life is going to be. So why not give tinting a try? I will see you again next week.